the only Nick Harris. That's what took me by surprise, the one and only, eh? that's kind of cool. Hey guys, it is fantastic to be back here with all of you. I'm going to like put these mics down so I can get my own space. But yeah, it's really good to be back here tonight. And I don't know how you guys are feeling, but I think it's also good to be back at school. Hey, I teach half you guys, I was be like, yeah, we love your classes, something like that. No, no, seriously. After the holidays, I always find it interesting. After the holidays, I always find it interesting. I pretty much always ask people this one question, simply this. How were your holidays? And what I've worked out, having spoken to a whole bunch of you guys about your holidays, the responses come in pretty much one of two forms. Option number one is simply this. My holidays were totally awesome, man. I went overseas, I bought this, I did this, I saw my friends, I saw this movie, had this sleepover, I went to that party. It was awesome and I slept in and it sucks to be back at school. And then they go, and here's your slab of chocolate, Mr. Harris. I missed you, thank you very much. I like it when that happens. You guys should try that more often. The other way that people respond to holidays is like, yeah, holidays are good, you know. I just had a few sleep-ins, I saw my friends a little bit, but to be honest, Apart from like that one time I went to the movies, I pretty much just stayed at home and had to look after my brother or I had to look after my sister and it kind of got a little bit boring. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad to be back here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it, I understand. The truth is that half you out there really, really miss seeing all your friends and all your teachers at school. And so when you get back, you're like, oh yeah, school's back on. Be honest, that's the way half you feel. So anyway, yeah, someone says like, no, there's like stony signs and points. So anyway. All those stories or your opinions to aside, I'll begin, and if you've been in my SNE classes, you've heard this, begin by sort of just sharing a little bit about my holidays, right? So holidays begin, and I'm one of those kinds of people that's a bit from column A and a little bit from column B. See, the reality is for me, I love my holidays. I love sleeping in. I, I get up at 5.45 every single morning when school's on, so I love holidays to sleep until like 8 o'clock in the morning, and the sun's actually up when you're up. And everyone's like, what? You sleep until 8 in the morning? You call that a sleep in? That's the time we get to school. Anyway, I love sleeping in, I love hanging out with friends and doing stuff, but also, I do actually miss you guys, I do miss my classes, and I do miss mine. I'm so glad there's some girls that know how to respond, they're like, it's like, oh, my goodness. you haven't tried that again, I miss you guys, aww. So anyway, much of stuff aside, Kat and I, right, we're with our friends, we went, we went away down south to Denmark, which is a few hours down. And we're staying at this place called the Alvoka something something farm place. And we're staying at this place, and it was really cool because every single morning you're staying in this farm, you'd go into the chicken pen and you'd get your own fresh chicken eggs. Now, you may think that chickens are really cool like fluffy creatures, but they're not. Like seriously, FYI, chickens are psycho. Like you take a step into the pen, I think they just sort of sense you there to steal the eggs. And so they start like clucking like crazy, like <laughs> That's like a quack song. But anyway, they run up to you and they start like attacking your feet. So I'm just like, wow, I've got your eggs and I'm running out the door. And this other chicken follows my friend through the door. It's like a ninja chicken. So it jumps through and starts like pecking at us. I'm like, whoa, this chicken's psycho. And my friend's like, don't worry, I got this. And he's like, bang. Yeah, what do you think happened to the chicken? <laughs> you really think my friend killed chicken? No. Or his chicken? Mmm, good, with potatoes, roast pumpkin, carrots, love this stuff. No, no, he grabbed the chicken by its tail, right? And I'm like, dude, you can't do that to birds. And he opens the door and he's just like, whoosh, throws it through. And this chicken's like, <laughs> rolling on the ground. I'm like, man, we're going to so get kicked out of this place. Chicken just gets up, starts clucking, and runs straight back at us. We slam the door shut, you know? Didn't want to see what that chicken was going to do for revenge. Hey, at this farm, there are guinea pigs, we fed them. There are Shetland ponies, which are like miniature horses, we fed those things. There were alpacas, I don't really know what they are, so I'm just going to say they were alpacas, they're big funny looking things, there were horses and there were cows, and we had a good time away. And on the one night, Kat and I decided to sort of just get out of the unit for a little bit, and we went for a run through this farm, right? And as we're jogging through this farm, and I should probably explain, when I say run, I mean more like waddle through the farm, so it's not that fast. So as we're waddling through this farm together, we're going along, we're passing this herd of cows. And as we pass these cows, Kat just starts, I'm like, what? The guy's like, Ooh. Just putting it out there, ladies. If you're on a date with a guy, don't move. It's not the way to pick him up. And men, if you think moving school, it's the quickest way to find yourself dumped. So we're running along, and Kat's like, Ooh. 
she turns to me, she's like, you know you want to do it. And I was like, do it. <laughs> she's like, come on, do it. So I'm like, Whoa. But here's the scary, crazy thing, right? I'm moving back to these cows, and all of a sudden I'm like, Whoa. and then they like, Whoa. and I'm like, Whoa, and they're like talking, and just running along, Whoa. Whoa. But I'm like, have you ever seen this? The cows started running. <laughs> There's like a hundred of them, and the ground starts vibrating. And the only thing between my, the, myself and the cows is my wife, which is you know, a little bit of protection, and a single barbed wire fence. I start running rather fast at this point. I'm freaking out, and the cows are just like, Ooh. I'll tell you what, I must be like doing the best sexy mating cow fall ever or something. Because I have never seen cows run, but the moral of the story is they got to the end of the paddock and they obviously knew the barbed wire was going to hurt, so they stopped, we finished our run, and I've learned my lesson. Don't do it, cows. <laughs> Unless you want a cow day. <laughs> cool, cool. Hey, holidays are awesome, but things like this even better. We have a massive termite night coming up. If you haven't checked out the flyers, yes, we've got ASMR in the fifth grader. We've got the 40 hour famine, which is going to be huge. I'll give that more plugs as we go along. We've got the adrenaline at the very end with Hillsong United. You, don't have the you need to YouTube them. We've also got Ignite Idol. I'm going to find out what talent we have. And we're starting, which is really, really cool, our Why God series tonight. And I've got the privilege of bringing you the first message. So let's pray and get into God's Word. Let's do it. Okay. Father, I just want to thank you for these awesome guys. Thank you that so far tonight we've had a good time just chillaxing and hanging out together. Now, I ask, Lord, now as we um, come and sit under your word, that uh, you'll use me to speak clearly your word, the words of truth. And I ask, Father, too, that um, you'll give these guys the courage to just ignore what's going on around them and to listen to what you to say and then to put into action if that's what you desire. You might even pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Question Can you remember the day you were born? No. Really? Can you remember the day you were born? Not what people tell you, actually remember. I can. I can remember everything that led up to my birth. So in my mind, clearly, I still got the memory of what it was like to be in my mum's womb, in her stomach. I'm in there, and it's an awesome, awesome place. It's warm, you got plenty of food, you can sleep when you like, you can jump around and play as you feel like, you can pretty much do whatever you like, because there's no one in there to tell you when to do things and when not to do things. Total freedom. And so I'm in my mum's womb and I can remember enjoying myself there. But I have this other vivid memory. And it's the memory of my final day in the womb. I'm in there in the stomach with this gooey stuff and I decide it's time to bust out of here. I need to see what else is going on, you see. So I grab together my, you know, muscly baby arms and it's like, okay, there's walls to the left of me, walls to the right of me, above me, everywhere I go there's walls. So how am I going to get out of this little paradise? Yes, prison cell. And so with all my might, I muster all my strength and I start just pushing against the walls in every single way possible. And this battle is painstaking as I push every single way that I can try to get out of here. And I'm struggling and I'm struggling and let's face it, I'm a baby. I get tired, so I take a little break, a a breather. <laughs> Have a little bit of you know, a feed, and then back into it because I am determined on this final day that I have to get out of here. So I'm pushing, I'm kicking, and I'm just trying to gnaw my way and biting, and I don't have these teeth thing, I've got these little gums, I'm like, uh-uh, trying to get out of this room when all of a sudden there's this, this flash of light and these ten long things come in and pluck me out 